my god, guys. Jeff Hardy makes his debut in AEW, reuniting the Hardy Boys. Chris Jericho turns heel, actually ends, turns his back on the inner circle, turns heel in the inner circle, and actually forms a new faction that he calls the uh, Jericho's Appreciation Society. FTR kicks out. Uh, they actually fire Telly Blanchers, their manager. Of course, as I mentioned, Jeff Hardy and the Hardy Boys reunite after Matt Hardy gets voted out of F of HFO. Man, what a show tonight! My God, we have a new TNT champion in Scorpio Sky defeating Samuel Sammy Guevara. What a show, guys! I I really wanted to touch on two things I wanted to say about Dynamite tonight coming out of all um coming out of revolution and that's the fact that okay so first the Jericho situation let's just let's just cut that in the back so you know Jericho comes out and man did this really call you know he had been kind of teasing that he was turning heel he was kind of teasing a heel turn even building up to his match with Eddie Kingston you know, it seemed as though even when he, even when, uh, you know, it's when the, uh, when Santana Ortiz seemed like they were siding more with Eddie because Eddie was saying that he was holding him back. And, you know, when they had a, when they had a inner circle meeting, he had actually said that maybe he, maybe he brought the wrong, uh, members of the inner, maybe he brought the wrong members of LAX to join the inner circle. Then he said, you know, do you have, homicide and um Hernandez number he's basically trying to say that he got the wrong members and he was just kind of shutting them down uh when they had their inner circle meeting uh that he said was mandatory so you could kind of see signs of distinction between a group a group that pretty much has been together for two and a half years almost three years that was on the very first dynamite is when they formed back in October 2019 and the crashes have been turned. It had been teased for quite a while that this, you know that this team was that this was going to happen. But you know, I, I really thought that the way that this going to go down was that Santana Ortiz were likely going to be the ones to you know actually put it into it and you know move on. But that was not to be. And you know, it, it really, what, what surprised me more about this was that Jericho come, you know, he came out, he said, you know, he, he asked Eddie to come out because he didn't shake his hand after Eddie beat him at Revolution. He told him, you know, he felt, he had been felt, he felt bad about it. He'd been thinking about it all week. For the last two days, he'd been thinking about it. And he told Eddie to come out, you know, and Eddie cut this long promo back. He said, you know, this doesn't seem like an Eddie problem. This is a Jericho problem. You know, you're the you're the one who didn't want to shake my hand. He talked about how he actually um, felt pretty bad, you know, thinking about what Jericho said about him not winning the big one. Actually, took a toll on him. Actually, um, at a point, he didn't even want to have the match because he was thinking about all the people he mentioned. Moxley, you know, he mentioned Miro, all the people he's lost to when it comes to the big t the big matches and. You know, it really seemed like these guys were finally just going to bury the hatchet, and and then you know he he stand, you know Jericho put his hand out. He said, you know, everything he said is right. Let's just forget all about this. He puts his hand out. They shake hands. Then 2.0 comes out, and ironically, the same group that these two guys had been battling with, the same group that actually took Jericho out for a while. Um, around the time when him and Kingston first started their little back and forth stuff, the same group that took him out, the same group that they even both were going up against, they ended up beating Eddie Kingston and a guy who was partners wearing that six-man tag. They randomly beat him with a roll-up, which shocked a lot of people because I think Danny Garcia was the one who got the pin. And the same group who does that, it looks as though when they came out and attacked them, because they only they only knocked Jericho down, but they kept beating down Eddie, and then you know Santana Ortiz came to try to save them both, and it, it looked as though Jericho was going to use his bat 
and uh, like he was going to hit hit one and 2.0 with it. But instead, he clocked Santana and Ortiz. And that, and you know, I was like, oh my God. So, and then he kept beating out Eddie Kingston. Then Jake Hager comes out. He, he He's all screaming at Jericho, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Because they actually, what the funny thing about it is when Jericho came out, he had the inner circle um, vest on. But by the end of this beatdown, he took it off. So you had him, you know, come out, took the thing off, put it down. And then um, Jake Hager actually joined on the beatdown. And then, and then he grabbed the microphone and said that, you know, this is the Jericho Appreciation Society. Pretty interesting name. Um, I, <laughs> that name is kind of weird, but, you know, pretty interesting name. Uh, I, I, the, the thing I found funny about this whole thing is that, number one, you know, this is the group who, specifically Dan Garcia, I thought, you know, he would have been one of the guys, Moxley or... Uh, Brian Danson would have recruited when they were talking about, you know, forming a team. I thought he would have been the guy for them to do, but apparently that's not to be. Apparently it might just end up being Moxley and Brian Danson. Maybe they won't form, you know, more guys, especially with William Ringle after the promo he cut tonight in regards to them to about anybody stepping in their path and be in trouble. He's going to kind of be like the man that, you know, pretty much, uh, I don't even know how I want to say manage, but he's going to be coming out with them moving forward, especially given how long he's known both of them and Brian Danson at that and what he's seen in them too. So they're going to, so it was pretty great to see those two guys and their tag match they had. You know, they looked really good in that match. But um, going back to this, you know, um, that was kind of the thing that got me. It's like Jericho went from being in a faction to joining another faction. So he basically leaves the faction that he forms just to form another faction. <laughs> that was the part that caught me off guard. It's like, okay, so, you know, because he had been going back and forth. You get the whole thing with him and Eddie. 2.0, they had a thing with them. And to think that the same guys he had to thing with, he forms a group faction with. And then Hager, because he had nothing else to do. I mean, let's be realistic. If he wasn't with Jericho, I don't know what he would be doing. Of course he joined. So, you know, now he has another faction. And and does this mean that the inner circle is completely over? I, I don't know. I mean, you saw Sammy still come out with the, with the vest on in the main event. Even though... He got out of Dodge when they had that meeting and said, hey, you know, basically, if you guys don't get it together, if you guys can't get it straight, you know, I want to build my own legacy. And so he took the vest and put it down. But, you know, you start to wonder, what does this mean for him? Even though he had already been wrestling solo up to this point, what does this mean for Santa 10 or Tina? Are they just going to go by Proud and Powerful, which was already their name? You know, is the inner circle completely dead at this point? I don't know. I mean... He did. He did officially turn heel, even though he had already been teasing it prior to full prior to Revolution. But this cemented that with him kicking them out, with him, you know, turning on them, and, and um, so that was pretty interesting. Um, and then from there. You have, so, so that was a little bit weird how that happened, but like I said, you leave a faction that he was the leader of just to join another one with those guys. Pretty interesting. Really interested to see what this, how this is going to go down moving forward. Um, and then you have, you know, the situation with the Hardy, with Jeff Hardy. I want to touch on that. Everyone knew Jeff was coming to AEW because he had already pretty much confirmed it, but it was still great to see him because, you know, pretty much after HFO lost at um, Revolution, 
of the earth even and staying in them. Like you knew something was gonna go down. And Matt basically was saying, you know, he felt bad about how he treated a private party, how he treated everybody, how his suit makes him was making him different, was making him, you know, how big he was, the money and stuff, and he was wearing his regular outfit and he, you know, they had this little vote and they voted him out first. Private party looked as though he was like, my kids will never vote me out. They looked like they were on his side, but as soon as he turned around, they put their thumbs down. I tried to just like to watch your back and they all start beating him down. And first Derby and Sting came out to save him. Everybody kept cheering. Jeff, Jeff, as we know, his non complete cross just ended not too long ago, like a day or two ago. Or maybe it was actually today, but I think it was actually, no, it was Monday, but everyone knew this, so everybody's chanting Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Then boom, what do you know? Jeff comes out after Derby and Sting trying to save him. And Jeff actually comes out with the Hardy Boys team. So that was pretty cool because I didn't know. You know, if that was something that the WWE owned or if they owned it themselves, I, I really had no idea. So it was cool to see him, you know, if the, I don't really want to say them, but, you know, them or whoever actually can, can made the song. But it was pretty cool to see him come out with that again. So um, Hardy Boys are back together. You figured if they would kick him out of HFO, that the Hardy Boys would reunite. But what a dynamite, guys. I mean, man, Jeff Hardy's in AEW. Hardy boys are back together. This time in AEW, Jericho formed. She had another faction, leaving the one he formed originally that, you know, had been the centerpiece of AEW for a better part of two and a half years. Um, even though, really, when you look at the history of Inner Circle, the only person that benefited the most from it, I mean, I guess you could say in some ways it's Sammy, proud and proper. They never won a tag belts the whole time. Um, you know, Sammy managed to win a TNT belt while still being a part of Inner Circle. Jay Hager, I mean, he's <laughs> just, I don't know. Um, but very interesting to see that, guys. I, this, this is, in some ways, this felt like the dynamite full of breakups because you have you had that betrayal with Jericho the inner circle you had the betrayal with HFO kicking Matt out you had FTR firing Telly Blanchard so this in some ways this kind of just felt like the dynamite full of betrayals but um you know I, I mean I don't even know if I would call the FTR one a betrayal because he kind of deserved to get kicked out with you know um I think it was um I can't even, which one was it? Um, um, can't name his name, but <sighs> basically he was talking about family and Telly Blanchard was like, no, you need to focus on the belts. And then he said, you know, family is important and you're fired. So what does this mean for the pinnacle as far as the fact that he was also managing Sean Spears before he got with them? I have no idea because you start to wonder, well, if they fired him, you know, what does that mean? How would Sean Spears feel about that? Because he also managed Sean Spears and Sean Spears is in the pinnacle. I don't even know what's going on with the pinnacle at this point. <laughs> I have no idea. But we know Warlow is out, so we know that. We know that thing. We didn't see MJF at all. You know, Warlow's out. He's facing Scorpio Sky, and I'm calling it next week because Scorpio just won. I was surprised Scorpio won. I actually thought Sammy would retain, but then again, since Warlow just turned babyface, it makes sense to have you know Scorpio win this, actually con re uh, continuing his undefeated streak. Now 365 days, um, he not being pinned. It was pretty cool because you know the last time Scorpio had a uh, title shot at the TNT belt was actually last year around this time when he won um, the brass ring at Revolution last year. He faced Derby Allen and lost, and that was when he first turned heel. 
when he um, lost to Derby Allen last year for the belt. So now he finally wins it, of course, with some shenanigans with Ethan Page and him. But he finally wins it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that was – so, you know, if he won – he, I don't. He's definitely. He's definitely not losing next week. The world. I'm calling it. Warlow's gonna get screwed by. If it's not them, he gets screwed by. It's definitely gonna be MJF. Um. By far, I just know that's gonna happen. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, this was definitely quite the dynamite. Moxley and Brian Danielson form pretty heck of a team. Looking forward to these guys. Um, tearing the house down as a group after the match they had at, Dynam at uh, Revolution. The ending was kind of weird, but you know the match itself was amazing. It's just the way they ended it with the pen kind of just came out of nowhere. But um, you know, William Wrangle set them straight. Those guys won it. I just want to touch on all the big things, guys. I know Yuta on face pop. That was a that was a pretty decent match. You know, Thunder Rosa, Ashley B. Layla Hirsch, she's getting another title shot with Britt Baker in a steel cage match next week. Looking forward to that. Hopefully it's a lot better than their match at Revolution. I thought their match at Revolution was good, but it just had way too much interference that kind of took away from the match. I'd say the Lights Out one um, was so, a lot better, um, not just because of the weapons, but just because... You know, you had the limited amount of interference and stuff in that match. This one, the one they had at Revolution was good, you know, for the time it had. But I just think the interference in some ways kind of cut away from the match. But, yeah, I just want to touch on that, guys. Um, specifically, the Jeff Hardy and Jericho thing. That definitely was something I wanted to touch on. But, um, yeah, so sign off for the best of flex. Like, comment, uh, subscribe, and... Um, I will talk to you guys another piece.